Growing a sales team is a challenge. Growing a sales team across cultures, countries, and continent is even a more difficult undertaking, but it makes for a richer experience and it does bring more revenue. On today's episode, my guest is going to talk to us about how do we go about doing so, building that diversity and growing our teams, especially as we're focusing on this idea of setting goals. Many of us have plans and we want to make a more of a diverse team. Listen to some ideas that can help you as you're setting goals for 2022 to make that happen. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have the one and only Jerry Bruner. And Jerry is the global, he's a president and also global field operations over at Enable. And um, they're a really cool company. You can find more information about Enable. I'm as we dive into this episode today, I want you guys to come with an open mind because some of you might say, well, Donald, I'm not the sales leader, so I, it doesn't matter. This episode doesn't seem like it's going to make impact on me. I'm not going to be in charge of scaling the team, but yes, you are. You have a huge impact. Your voice matters. And when you come to your leaders and you help them to understand the importance of high, uh, diversity, whether that's diversity of gender, diversity of race, diversity of thought, diversity across the country, um, you know, from different backgrounds, it makes for a much better working environment. Your brand also finds success, and naturally, you're going to find success as well. So I encourage you to listen to this to see how you can help others. And naturally, a lot of you are going to get into sales leadership. You should be able to understand these things before you get into those roles. And besides the whole COVID thing, why are we in such a situation where there's a shortage, so to speak? You know, let me be the first to say there's no shortage of talent. Fair there are so many <laughs> bright, driven, capable people out there. I would say we as, as companies and we as hiring managers, and, and I used to make this mistake, um, are, are, are not looking at the right places and at the right type of people. Mm. And you know, the first mistake I used to make, and I don't know, let me just say like, we have found lots of unbelievable sales talent. We have at my company. I've been here since January. We've hired unbelievable men. We continue to find lots of talent. And I think we do it because we are different than other people. And by that, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area and, you know, I started as BDR, went to inside sales, went to mid market sales, went through Oracle, SAP, all this stuff. And I thought I was, you know, the sales talent and people would hire me and I would cover accounts in Michigan or the rest of the US. And if you're going to do that, you're definitely competing for talent. You're competing against Bay Area teams, you're competing for talent. We go the other way. We have, we believe there is so much talent and diversity out there and so much intelligence that you just have to go look for it. You have to go out there and be willing to not go to New York and Boston because there are talented people all over the globe and especially in North America, but all over the globe as well. We hire in Canada, we hire in the UK, all right? We're hiring in Asia, in Australia, New Zealand, all these places that people don't traditionally look. Um, and, and you will find they're capable, smart people there everywhere. We are, we, we think, you know, if you are committed and hardworking, which are so many people are, and you bring a different perspective, Bringing a different perspective, diversity, really helps a sales team and a sales cycle as well. Love this. Um, I, I, and I go further on that. Like, how do you feel that diversity can help make that happen? Well, you know, there's a few things. Um, as much as I would like to think that every company in the world is in San Francisco, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> right? Think of most of the people in the world and most of the companies. So if you have grown up in Michigan and you didn't grow up in Detroit, but you grew up outside and you're, you know, you understand the industries there and you understand the local region and the people, wouldn't those be the best representatives for your company into that company? Or do you want to have somebody from Chicago fly up there every two weeks who grew up in Chicago and went to an Ivy League school and says, you know, here, here's your proposal for, you know, $10 million worth of software. I think you have to go, that is the diversity I'm talking about. There, you know, there's great, great talent everywhere in the world. You just have to be open to it. With this, how do we best as organization 
make plans because we're looking at this you know this is the beginning of the year right now we know people are going to be doing some recruiting going on later throughout the year and continue recruiting what are some things that you can tell leaders right now as they're planning they're listening to this episode they're like crap we need to do this how do i go about planning in diversity recruiting i mean there's a few ways you can do it i think the obvious ways are to say like am i hiring 10 people you can say that, you know, every sales leader says I got a capacity model, I'm going to hire 30 AEs and, and that's fine. But, you know, then you're going to fall into the trap of, okay, I got 30 AEs, where are the most AEs, where are they ready, how do I go get them? And your recruiting agency and your hiring manager, everyone's going to, you know, race off to those cities and fall into the exact same trap that we've been in. Or you can say, what I look at is I work backwards, you know, for our team, I said, here are our customers. Here's our biggest territories, right? Our biggest territories are in the central and the east, right? Here are the type of industries that are in, right? Here are the great countries. Okay, where are the people there that know that, right? That's number one, that's what I say. Where are the people there that know that? Because again, I can teach a sales skill or I can give everyone your book and teach them a sales <laughs> skill, one of, the, one of the two. <laughs> so that's why. And then number two, I think, okay, if I can teach that and you have to be determined and, and you know an industry, how do I go find you? Right? And that's my job. It's, it's super, it's too easy for a recruiting agency to say, all the AEs are in, are in Chicago, I'm gonna go there. You have to like dictate where to go, what type of person you're looking for, what type of background. You know, I don't want the traditional background because as a cloud native solution, we're a disruptor. And we're, we got a different sales cycle, right? So I'm going literally to the line of business on this one. So, um, you know, I don't just say AEs. I say, you know, background, region, type, skill set, and then I go assign that out. You know, uh, uh, what I really believe on this one, on is, you know, diversity is our biggest asset. That is without a doubt our biggest asset, right? And, and as our company, and I've seen it go through the, through the years at, at smaller companies and older, more established companies. Um, but you have to put a focus on it. And you have to put a focus on it in terms of country, gender, and especially race, especially race, right? Uh, you know, there's so much diversity that goes on and people talk about it. You can see LinkedIn or Meta or Facebook or whatever go on today and talk about, you know, here are our diversity numbers and here's what we're trying to do and, and not do. But until the hiring managers and you and me make it, you're not, don't hire 10 AEs. I want four diverse, two gender orders, three race. Oh, like you, you, here's how, here's the quotas you have to do in terms of hiring practices. And if you don't look at that hiring practice, you'll never get there and we will never get there. And I think as a society and a profession, frankly, we need to focus on that. One last parting advice you would give to them. Um, our teams, your teams, our profession, our region is better with a diverse group of people gender, race, country, background, everything. So it just takes a little bit of focus, but I assure you in the long term, we will all be better for it. And I know my company will be better for it. That was my good friend, Jerry, and we got a chance to connect. And I can say good friend. He's so easy to talk to and a fun guy to, to connect with. And I want you to connect with him as, as well. You can find him on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and search for him. You can find his information in the show notes as well. Um, you can find him on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash in slash Jerry, J-E-R-R-Y. And then his last name, Bruner, B-R-O-O-N-E-R. -E I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate your, you, you being here and being part of this uh, community. Appreciate you trying to make a difference. And I appreciate you um, looking for ways to share this podcast. If you're finding benefits, share it. And if you found success and opportunities and insights and value from this episode today, please leave me a rating and review and tell us how you enjoyed the show. It helps a lot. I appreciate you. As always, I want you to f find success. I want you to take advantage of the sponsors because these are people that I venture for, people that I love and tools that I use and I know can benefit and help you and your team as well. To find more information about our sponsors, find them in the show notes. As always, I want you to succeed. I want you to find more of your ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to raise your level of thinking and go out and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>